all the information what are the transaction we have done in the business what is our expenses what is our profit produced to the government in order to get the input tax rate to the extent of 10 thousand rupees that's why we need invoice the gst the seller also should be a registered person the purchaser also should be a registered person then only we can issue the tax invoice the taxable value or the tax charged in the tax invoice is more than the actual goods supplied Hello my dear students I am Rajesh sir faculty department of commerce and management vidyashram first aid college mysore temple of excellence my dear students in today's session i'm going to handle subject indra tax 246m bcom and the topic is invoice under gst what do you mean by invoice invoice is a bill it is a document so it is a document while purchase also while purchasing the product also we will get the invoice while selling the product also while receiving the money we should have a invoice a copy of invoice will be having so what are the copy we'll give to purchaser that invoice copy will be have duplicate copy will be having so we have to produce these documents to the tax authority in order to get the it may be input tax credit in it may be other benefits other clarification of doubts so we have to while you no know, giving the information or while furnishing the information to the tax authority so all documents has to be provided to the tax authority what is a gst invoice so business needs to charge various taxes it may be central cgst sgst gst and vat from their customers on the products and services and they report it to the government so whatever the information so we have sold so many products we have purchased it may be capital goods it may be you no know, other goods raw materials we have purchased so other repairs has done so all the information whatever the transaction we have done in the business what is our expenses what is our profit how much what is our cost present selling price so this information we have to provide to the tax authority under invoice next one what is gst invoice so a tax invoice is issued by one registered vendor a registered for example i am the registered person so i am selling the products so or purchasing the products so it has to be given or issued by a registered vendor to another to get input tax credit so why for purchasing product it may be capital goods or it may be raw materials you not know, to sell the products i will purchase the raw materials inputs so on this what we have to do for example 10 lakh rupees i have purchased for 10 lakh rupees and i should have all the documents for 10 lakh rupees what i have purchased every documents i need this to provide the tax authority i will sell this products to 2 lakh rupees after doing any no production other related production or improvements after improvements i will sell the products this article for 2 lakh rupees so while selling what are the tax i have paid into 10% i have tax paid that means 10000 rupees here also into 10% i have to pay the output tax 10% 20000 rupees so i will get the deduction input tax credit to the extent of 10 whatever i have paid as a input tax i can deduct this input tax from output tax so remaining 10000 rupees payable to government so in order to get this tax input tax credit i should have all the documents so whatever the inputs i have purchased i should be having all the documents to produce to the government in order to get the input tax credit to the extent of 10000 rupees that's why we need invoice next one is just a summary it is just a summary of invoice that can be used for gst and hst whether you report monthly quarterly or annually so your report means reporting to the government tax authority it may be monthly annually or quarterly all invoice and documents should be produced a tax invoice must be issued when your customer is gst registered so a tax invoice when we issue the tax invoice if the customer is registered person then only we can issue the tax invoice otherwise we cannot issue the tax invoice next one who should issue the gst invoice so here if you are gst registered person or business we i am should be the registered person to issue the tax invoice and also other registered person he should be a registered person so both purchaser and seller should be registered person to get the tax invoice need to provide the gst complaint invoice to your clients for a sale of goods and other services so your gst registered vendor will provide gst complaint purchase 
invoice into you. So, for example, even though the GST, the seller also should be a registered person, the purchaser also should be a registered person, then only we can issue the tax invoice. If one party is not a registered person, so we cannot, we don't have right. For example, I am the registered person. If I want to give the invoice, tax invoice to other registered person, I will be having all details. His no unique number will be there. If he is get registered, so he will be he will be having a unique number, he will be having GST number or understanding. So on that number, I will mention in the invoice what is his GST number. So while purchasing the product, he will get that document. So all the information what he has purchased inputs, all information will transfer to tax authority or the government. If he is not registered person, he will be not having unique number, he will be not having proper identity number. So I cannot issue, I cannot mention the his number in the tax invoice so that I cannot issue the tax invoice to him. For example, if he is purchasing, I am the unregistered person or not registered person, if he is purchasing goods, even though he is registered person, he cannot receive the tax invoice because I am not registered person, I don't have any unique number or identity number from the tax authority, so I cannot mention, I, can, I don't have any authority to issue the tax invoice. Like that, both purchaser and receiver or seller has to be registered person to get invoice. Next point, what are the other types of invoice? What are the other types of invoice? Bill of supply. So it is a bill of supply is a similar to GST invoice. It is similar to GST invoice, but expect for that bill of supply does not contain any tax amount as the seller cannot charge GST to the buyer. So in the bill of supply, the tax amount, how much tax is deducted? What is the liability of the tax has to be payable to the government? That amount is not mentioned in the bill of supply. It just contain the actual price of the product. Next one, a bill of supply is issued in case where tax cannot be charged. Fair for those goods where we cannot tax the product. So we cannot levy the tax on the product we are purchasing or selling in this case. So we will issue the bill of supply. So a registered person is selling exempted goods or service. If registered person for example i am the registered person if i am selling the goods for example agricultural products i am selling for a milk i am selling those no goods are exempted from the tax preview okay so if i am selling or purchasing tax which is not taxable items then the bill of supply will be issued tax invoice will not be issued only taxable product should be issued. for example while selling or purchasing the taxable product then we can receive or get the invoice. Next one, registered person has opted for composition scheme. If the registered person is opt opted for composition scheme, then also instead of forward scheme, so you can opt for registered person, opt for composition scheme, then also you will issue the bill of supply. Next point, what are the other types of invoice? Next one, invoice come bill of supply. This includes both invoice also, bill of supply also. So here as per the notification of 45 2017 central tax dated 13th October 2017. If a registered person is supplying taxable as well as exempted goods, if a registered person is supplying, for example, a motorbike is a motorbike is a taxable product if he is supplying motorbike, and also milk is a not taxable product. So if supplying a non-taxable product, so if he is supplying both the products, then he will issue can issue both invoice and invoice come custom bill for that so this you know bill will contain it will be called as so this bill contains both taxable products and not taxable product then it will be called as invoice come bill of supply this con contains both products of invoice pro invoice that means the product which attracts invoice also the product or product which attracts bill of supply also if you are sending or purchasing both the products then he can issue the registered person can issue the bill of supply next one is supplying taxable as well as exempted service or goods to an unregistered person to an unregistered person so we are supplying a goods to unregistered person i am the registered person ca is the registered person he is sending goods he is the unregistered person unregistered person he is the registered person if he is sending the goods to b where he is unregistered person then he can issue the invoice come bill of supply the person then he can issue the selling invoice come bill of supply for all such supplies next point aggregate invoice so what is my in aggregate invoice so if the value of the multiple invoice is less than 
200 and the buyer are unregistered, the seller can issue an aggregate or bulk invoice for the multiple invoice on the daily basis. For example, if the product is just for example 50 rupees, 100 rupees, so 150 rupees, 75 rupees. So it is a small product which is having a very small amount. So in this case, so you can get, you will add all the items, you will add all the items, you will get some aggregate value. So on this aggregate value, he will issue an invoice that is called as aggregate invoice. And the buyer are unregistered dealer. So if the buyer, so who is the buyer of our products is unregistered person, then also we can issue aggregate or bulk invoice for the multiple invoice on daily basis. For example, every day we have to send the goods. Every day we have to send the goods. So at least, for example, after 15 days or at the end of one month, after 30 days, we can issue a bulk invoice. Instead of every day giving the invoice 30 rupees, 40 rupees, 50 rupees. So every for every month we can give bulk invoice. Next month. For example, you may have issued three invoice in a day for example 80 rupees 90 rupees and 100 rupees and 120 rupees so in such way so you can issue single invoice for including all the products you can issue a single invoice totaling a 290 rupees next point debit note and credit note what am a debit note and credit note you will be having five marks question very important so five marks question or write a note on debit note write a note on credit note this type of question you will be having so where a tax invoice has been issued for supply and the value in the invoice is found exceeds the taxable value or the goods supplied or returned or the service supplied or deficient or there is a revision in the invoice value or a note containing such particulars is issued by the supplier and the receiver of the goods to the receiver of the goods is or both. What do you mean by that? So where tax invoice has been issued for a supply and the value in the invoice is found exceeded the taxable value. For example, I had to pay 100 rupees tax, but the supplier has collected 200 rupees tax. The supplier has collected 200 rupees tax instead of collecting 100 rupees tax. So then the recipient of the goods will issue a note. And a, for example, to reclaim the amount, to reclaim the amount, he will issue a note. At the same, for example, if you pay lesser tax, the supplier will issue one more note. So, okay, like that, we have to issue debit note and credit note. What do you, let's see what is debit note and credit note. Here, the supplier of the goods or service may issue a credit note to a recipient of such goods or services in any of the following cases. So, when he will issue the credit note? The taxable value or the tax charged in the tax invoice is more than the actual goods supplied. For example, 100 rupees we have to tax, 100 rupees we have to tax, but we have taxed 200 rupees. So that's what he says. The taxable value of such tax charged in the tax invoice is more than the actual goods supplied or returned by the recipient service supplied or found to be deficient. So in such case, the recipient of the goods will issue a credit note where he will claim the remaining tax because he has paid instead of paying 100 rupees he has paid 200 rupees isn't it that's why to claim the claim back the tax or receive the amount what he has paid excess tax so he has to get the amount that's why he will issue a credit note to the supplier so in this case the credit note will be issued by the recipient of the product to the supplier of the product the next point, what are the items containing in the credit note? So the credit note will be having the word credit note should be there, heading of that note. Next one, name of the and address of the GST number of the supplier to whom we are sending. The supplier we are sending, the recipient of the product is sending the no, no, credit note to supplier because he has paid the more tax, so he has to get back his amount, more whatever the excess amount he has paid, he has to get back the amount, that's why he is. So next one, the Consecutive serial number. So what is the consecutive serial number? 1, 2, 3 is there. Which note we are issuing? Next point, date of the document. Next one, name and address and the GST number or unique code if registered person is recipient. Next one, name and address of the recipient and the address of the delivery. So to whom we have sold the product and to whom we have delivered the product, that address should be there. Next one, if such recipient is unregistered, name and state of the and its code. If the recipient is unregistered dealer 
then the name and code of that particular state has to be mentioned serial number of and date of the corresponding in tax invoice bill so on which tax invoice we have sent while selling the product we have sent a we have a, a document or we have a duplicate copy of that invoice that you know tax invoice number has to be produced next one the value of taxable supply of goods or services rate of tax and the amount of tax credited or debited as the case may be to the recipient so how much tax is received from the supplier or the how much tax received from the recipient of the product or the customer so that information has to be provided next one signature of or digital signature of the supplier has authorized representative so who is the head of the no institution who is the head of the business the authorized person digitized signature or digital signature has to be provided next point credit note shall have the following practices first one time frame what in the time frame so a registered person who is the supplier shall declare the details of such credit note in a returns for the month during which such credit note has been issued so every at the end of every month the recipient of the goods or the supplier of the goods who has provided or issued the credit note has to provide the information this much of credit note has been issued to our you no know, recipient of the goods so this information to we have to send to the government or the tax authority but not later than september so not later than september we have to provide the information to the tax authority following the end of the financial year in which such supply is made so at the end of the financial year so we have to provide the information or the date of filing the annual return so on the date of filing the annual return we have to provide the information to the tax authority whichever is earlier either the september following the end of the financial year or the date of filing the return whichever is earlier so before that date we have to provide the credit note information to the tax authority next point debit note debit note called supplementary invoice the supplier shall issue the debit note to the following cases when he will issue the debit note to the recipient of the product the registered person has supplied the goods or service the registered person who can issue the debit note the taxable value in the tax invoice is less than the taxable value for example we have to tax 200 rupees but we have taxed only 100 rupees still we have to collect 100 rupees from the recipient of the product recipient of the product then the supplier issue the debit note to the uh, customers of the product or purchaser of the product the tax charge in the tax invoice is less than the tax payable next point debit note shall having the following particulars the word supplementary invoice or debit note should be mentioned so be included in the face or the the head of the bill next one name and address and gst number of the supplier date of issue and also name address and gst number and unique identity number if the recipient is registered next one name and address of the recipient and also name and and the state and its code if such recipient is unregistered if the supplier of the, if the recipient of the product is not registered then the, we have to mention the state of the recipient and the code of such business next one serial number of the invoice so where we have issued the invoice so that invoice number you have to mention next one value of the taxable supply of goods or service how much what is the actual value of the goods next one rate of tax so that has to be amount what is the actual tax we have to charge next one signature the digital signature of the authorized person of the business these are the items you have to mention in the tax invoice in the next session we will discuss on casual taxable person aggregate turnover next one central rules for registration of gst and also person exempt from registration these things we'll discuss in the next session till then thank you so much